lives of great men all remind us we must make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time she was born in 1918 as the youngest child to a dynamic mother angeline jaisuria and to an illustrious father mohandiram chas jaisuria who was a renowned philanthropist of southern sri lanka she was a member of a happy family of nine six boys and three girls they grew up to be eminent personalities who served lanka in academic government and legal fields she started her primary education at st bridget's convent in 1926 she entered anand balika vidyalaya which she regards as a real alma mater she was held in high esteem for her performance in singhalese and pali by the university staff uh, 1980 asupa havasare anand balikave adisha sangame katitu sabhapati nivashana e katitu kala tere maya samipa sambandhatawen pawattala thiyena anand balikawa samaga e wagema ara mudal sampadane kala adisha sangamenta parithya karanna pawa e me e utsuka wela thiyenawa e gena api aadambarai e eta deergayu prarthana karana nirogima diviyakata after being a home bound graduate for 11 years she turned over a new leaf by starting a teaching career at southlands gol she pioneered the teaching of pali in the christian school during this period she handled the production of the singhalese dramas nala damayanti savitri and sigiri surupiya accompanying her husband in his transferable service she joined the staff of sujatha vidyale matara 3 years later it was a pleasure to join the staff of her alma mater anand balika vidyale she ended her 10 year profession prematurely as a principal of buddhist ladies college Here is another nice uh, moral for you to take. This is obedience. The flames rolled on. He would not go without his father's word. That father faint in death below. His voice no longer heard. He called aloud, "Say, father, say, if yet my task be done." He knew not that the captain lay. unconscious of his son speak father once again he cried if i may yet be gone and but the flames replied and fast the flames rolled on five years after her graduation and before starting the career in teaching the destined groom came to fetch her from the busy lively city of colombo to the remote areas of ambalantota he was thomas abey sekara DRO of Giruvana Pattwa Now she is a proud mother of 3 children 10 grandchildren and one great grandchild Being a woman who always wanted to serve humanity she used her premises to offer boarding facilities to women undergraduates to solve the urgent need of suitable accommodation Out of a thread a cloth is woven She wanted to encourage the rural women to weave their cloth of life out of threads of talent. She looked at them compassionately, felt for them genuinely. She got involved in their activities as if it was her very own. That is why they looked up to her like a friend, a sister and a mother. here at the preschool and daycare center at Kaduvela training center of the Lanka Mahila Samiti she has a moment of joy with the young ones the mangles kid she walks down her memory lane to recall the days she spent with her brothers and sisters 
It was during her childhood that the seeds of serving the nation was planted in her mind. This became a reality when in 1961 she joined the Nanka Mahila Samiti. She was elected chairman of the Colombo District Committee in 1961. With a few lapses of one or two years, she held this post right up to 1994. She held the conference of Colombo District Societies at the All Ceylon Women's Buddhist Association and thereafter a Triennial District Conference in 1963 at the Sri Lanka Dara Society. She represented two conferences in India, one from the Women's League for Peace and Freedom and the other was on free education in Ceylon, where she addressed the audiences. In 1962, she was nominated as a young delegate to the 10th Triennial Conference of the Associated Country Women of the World held in Melbourne, Australia. ACWW is the parent association of Lanka Mahila Samiti. She visited Women's Association as a delegate. The Australian University Women's Federation entertained her. As a committee member of Sri Lanka University Women's Federation, she was received ceremonially by graduate committees of Burma, Thailand, Jakarta, Sydney and Melbourne on her way to the conference. Thirty years later, at the age of 74, she was fortunate to attend the 20th Triennial Conference of ACWW held in 1992 at The Hague in Netherlands.